Hi everyone, I am Alex Parasa and I am a ClickUp consultant at Call Me Group. Did you know you can create and maintain a vacation day tracker in ClickUp to manage your employees out of office days? Here's a four step process to manage requests, approvals, and keep your team on track when it comes to time off and workload capacity in ClickUp. Your first step is to organizing a vacation time is to figure out what your processes are at your organization. That means what steps you need to happen between somebody going a request is sent all the way to all set, see you in two weeks. For example, if your employees are all remote, your process may be as simple as assigning a comment that reminds them to watch recordings or meeting notes for anything they had missed. On the other hand, in-person work is the coverage that you might be meeting. Are you going to need to get somebody in-house or somebody from outside as a temp agency? Or if this person is an administrator, who will take over direct reports? What requests are going to be routed to somebody else? Is there any milestones scheduled to occur during this person's time off? Definitely, these are processes that you already have in place inside the organization, but we can implement within ClickUp by using automations or even templates. In order to set up a template, we're going to go into this demo space right here. I have one created, but I will walk you through it. First, we want to create a task type. So if you can see right now, this task type right here, it's an umbrella. And that is just a good differentiator between an everyday task versus a request of time off, right? How do we set up this? Will we go into the list settings? We go to default task type and we create a task type. There's a few already built in here, but we're going to go create new task type. We hit, once we get to the screen, we're going to hit the create task type on the top and we get to select an icon. There's quite a few icons available for your use. Uh, so definitely you will be able to find one for your use case. In this case, we're going to say vacation. We have used beach already. So let's look a little plane. We're going to select, select a little plane here and then we just going to put it as time off. Note that in here shows you for a singular versus a plural name. So if something that you set up has a plural name, so vacation versus vacations, uh, definitely you want to set it up in here. Time off is the same both way. So we'll just put it as the same way. You can add a description in here as what it might be used for. In this case, it's pretty straightforward. Time off. And now we have a little plane set up. Let's go back to our demo space here and we can set that. So we go into the list settings and we hit default task type. I can select it from whatever it was before, typically it's task to set up as time off. And any request automatically will have the little plane attached to it. So you see plane right there. Now, when we're trying to set up a template, this is just the one thing that we want to use over and over for our process for our employees, right? So one of the things that we can set up, we can either make the request in many custom fields in which we can add situations like we set up in here, we can create a custom field uh, that could be like the type of request that you are using. Uh, maybe if uh, any coverage might be required, uh, let's see, we can create a new one. And maybe a checklist that says coverage required. These are really is, uh, good to use when we have automations down the line. So we can create uh, additional tasks just to remind our team that this is uh, going on, right? So we can create as many fields in here uh, just to remind us of our processes. Uh, we can make one that has many checklists. So if, for example, we can create a checklist in which we remind our employees to, you know, to watch the videos. You know, maybe read the notes. Um, we can either set them up either as a checklist or we can set them up as immediately as a subtask. Just make sure that all your steps are outlined here and based on your unique business workflows and processes internally. Once you're done with that, we're going to save this template as a template that we can apply in a form that we'll create down the line. To create a template, uh, we just go in here and right click. Then we scroll down to template center and then we go save as a template. Once you are done setting up the template, we are going to save it as a template on the template center using a standard Nebic procedures for your business. In this case, we're going to go right click 
going to start into template center, save us template, and we're going to have the template name. This is where we want to use that internal naming convention that we use for anything within the organization. For example, we're going to call this one, uh, go time off request. Time off request. Uh, we can select who can have access to this uh, template, meaning who can apply it. Uh, in this case, we're just going to say all members. And in this case, we want to import everything. We have a way of selecting what can be imported, but obviously we want right now to get our checklist and our self task and anything else that we have added. So we're going to import everything, but do take a look at it on your own and make sure that you're bringing in the information that you may need. I'm going to save this. It's going to be set up. The next step will be to set up a form. We're going to create this form. That is very easy way of capturing that information from uh, our employees to be able to request those days off. Um, the form can be very simple and it's probably even better to create them simple as people are not very keen of filling out forms. But anyway, so create a form. We would just uh, click on the view, the plus view here, and we're going to go down to form. When you select form, you have a chance to name it. So we're just going to call this requests and we're going to add that form. Now the form is going to come out completely clear. There's no information in here. So uh, we can drag and drop some of the fields that were already created within the workspace. So the first few are going to be the ones that are automatically created. And then we have the custom fields as so the extra ones that we added down the line. So for example, we can do the task name. Uh, recommendation would be that the task name is the employee's name. So we put employee's name here. Then we can set up a start date for your vacation, a due date, meaning the way that it ends, we can just end end date, change that to that. And perhaps we can add a type of request. That will be, we can set up which kind of request it is, and we can just save this. And this, uh, here we can, all, if you are on the enterprise plan, you can change the image in here, and we can change the name of the request and even add information on how to fill this out on this form. Once it's completed, this is what your form looks like. It is very simple, very put together. We can get this link and send that link out to anybody and uh, they can make their own requests. The purpose of the list is to gather basic information and in essentially how essential this person is with the leave, what kind of request it is, maybe how long it is. Uh, is there going to be any coverage needed? That's something we can gather on the internal side as well. Make sure that this form is attached to a list called PTO, time off, vacation days, or something that is identifiable to the purpose. Every time that the form is submitted, it will create a request in that specific list. So this is very important to be able to identify it. Once those two pieces are set up, we can also incorporate the template into the creation of that form. So in this case, I have created already a space called out of office, which is, I mentioned is important to identify that list. And we are going to go into the form. There's a form already created here with the same information we created on the other. In the editing, we went to add that template. So we created a template called request time off. So we'll set that one up and make that template the one that gets applied. So how does this work? Well. Simple as that. So I want to request some time off for myself. It's going to be some similar PTO there, and I will set up for next week. I just want to be gone for the week. And we'll submit. That request has been sent up, and now it should be on that auto office space. And here you're going to be able to see that that's my request. This comes with a little uh, plane that we created. Uh, but as you see, it's not a sign and there's no time estimate, but we do have the dates. So now that we have actually submitted, we see that my request is right here. Uh, it comes with those checklist items that we had already saved on our template. And as you can see, it comes with a start date, a due date, but there's no assignee and there is no time estimate. These two portions are very important for our workload view that we're going to be able to see down the line. Uh, so again, we can work with that as we go through the processes. Now, in our third step, we want to be able to notify that the person uh, requesting time off has been approved. 
and that any other, other person that needs to know is uh, notified. This may be done by just simply assigning a comment to the person who is uh, who is uh, at stake here, whether it's the employee or maybe like their manager. We can do that by setting up as a watcher on the request on the custom field or whatever you created earlier. Uh, just we can set that up. The most common way to solve is uh, to using a custom field uh, where something when it changes from one to the other, uh, it would approve, for example, Right now we have them set up with a requested and an approved or canceled status. If we went to set up from approved, we can create an automation that will send a message to, you know, this person's functional manager. Hey, this person has requested time off. So before we do that, we want to maybe assign this. We're going to assign this to the person who requested it. And that is a week. So we know that it's 40 hours that this person is taken off. Now that we go ahead and approve this, that it's approved, it actually does show as the capacity being used for this person. Now, we just started a new project, right? We have this project here with all of their tasks that need to be completed uh, based on the science and execution, and I need to assign all of these tasks. Now, I may have the dates, I may have the times I'm gonna get them done, but we don't have a normal way of um, knowing who's going to be able to do what and in which time frame. So we can set up a workflow view either in this list or even at a higher level to account for everybody. To create the workload view, we still go into the app plus view, create workload, and then name it, save it. Once it's created, you'll be able to see all of your employees Please note that we right now have uh, a view and a weekly set up as a two weeks. And I am looking at this by time estimates and not number of tasks. You are able to set up how much uh, weekly capacity one employee has individually, or you can apply to all of them at once. So let's say in this case, I set up 40 and you can set up for the entire time. Typically it will skip your weekends so just keep that in mind. So as you can see in here, we have this week starting on the second all the way to the 13th. And see, this this is our time off. We already blocked it off. It's already occupying the capacity. So let's talk about the capacity color is in here. Whenever you have an empty capacity, you're going to have this light green color. Whenever you actually assign a task, which we can do by dragging and dropping so let's just grab the first one in here I just got one and you drag and drop into the time it will tell you it will fill up so this task itself it's a eight hour estimated time and automatically filled up my entire day for eight hours now if i were to bring another one and put it on the same day you'll see that it turns red when it turns red it's telling you that you're over capacity and it will tell you how much over you are. For example, if I stretch this one, it will still show over that amount. But if I were to stretch this one over here, now we have an even number. See how we have the little darker green filling up the bar. This is the capacity that the person has now. The person has that little bit of green left. If we add another task, maybe that will bring us closer. And we can do that with all of the other people. It helps you to be able to calculate how much capacity somebody has on a specific time. And you're able to just fill them in as needed. Now, let's say I have this task and I only have my two employees here that I am trying to like do something with. I know that Alex is off between this time because of this capacity already been built up. And I also know that Pedro is going to be gone this time here. So we add it here. This person cannot do this, this work in here. So maybe it's something they can, they can uh, accomplish over the week. Maybe it's something that I need to uh, assign to somebody else. So see how like all that red is actually, actually able to give me a good idea of how to schedule some of these taskings. That way I am not overburdening my my people in here.
So overall, I want to just emphasize that some of the main portions of this uh, organization would be to create the process, create the process internally, make sure that you collect the relevant information for those processes and for your employee, see who will be able to be notified and how we do that notification and ensure that you have a standard unit, whether it's a calendar date or time estimate, some sort of point or something that you can track the time that this person is taking up. That way when we're planning, we're able to work out who can take some uh, additional tasks and who is actually not available for anything within the company. I hope this helps manage your vacation time instead of ClickUp.